Next, Paul Saraja is joined by Dr. Michael Zikowitz, Professor of Medicine at the Thomas Jefferson Medical College in Philadelphia, to address several key questions. How do I bridge anticoagulation, and what are the complications? Michael, welcome. Thanks very much, Paul. It's great to be here. So let's just talk a little bit about bridging anticoagulation. Kind of give us an overview of the scope of the problem and what are some of the issues that patients and clinicians often face when they're on anticoagulation. Well, the way I look at this is that we have had two eras. There has been the era of warfarin and then the era that is current that involves warfarin, of course, but also involves the novel agents. Can you tell us a little bit about what's being done currently as kind of the standard of care with warfarin? Yes. Well, it's very interesting. In 2004, I wrote an editorial in circulation, and it was entitled Warfarin Interruption Not Without Danger. And the reason for that was it was in response to a paper in the same volume of circulation by Kovacs and his colleagues that looked at patients who had prosthetic heart valves and required interruption for a cardiovascular procedure or some procedure. And what they did was they stopped the warfarin five days before the procedure, bridged the patients with low molecular weight heparin. The procedure was then done and the anticoagulation was reinstituted, generally with warfarin at a time that was considered safe after the procedure. And the reason I entitled the editorial not without danger, was that the preoperative phase worked out very well, but the intraoperative and the postoperative phase was associated either with bleeding or with thromboembolic events. So that this is an imperfect science, and even in the warfarin era, the amount of data available to guide us to optimize care was quite minimal. What is your approach at this point in terms of anticoagulation for patients who require interruption if they are on warfarin? Well, I think the basic idea is to minimize the length of time that they're not anticoagulated. So the work by COVAX for the preoperative phase when warfarin is involved I think is ideal. I think postoperatively we need to be more aggressive with respect to reinstituting anticoagulation and this obviously depends on the nature of the surgical procedure and requires judgment. For a patient who's on warfarin and or has an indication for warfarin after a surgical procedure Certainly, you would want to start anticoagulation as soon as the surgeon would allow you to in terms of the postoperative bleeding risk. How long would you continue the heparin or bridging agent up until the time that warfarin is being reinstituted? Well, that's a difficult question, and I don't think there are any rules. I think that becomes a judgment call. Obviously, heparin has the advantage of rapid onset of action, but it has to be given intravenously in low molecular weight heparin is injectable, and warfarin has the disadvantage of requiring at least four or five days for any action, and then there's the problem of the patient entering the optimal INR phase of two to three, which takes even more time, and that's part of the problem. But we're now in a much more fortunate position because, as you know, we're in the era where novel agents have been approved for a number of indications, and that seems to have changed the approach to bridging and whether it's actually needed and there is data that is very solid that has come from a number of these trials. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the newer agents, and certainly they are being used increasingly with recent publications of their efficacy, particularly in patients with atrial fibrillation. Can you tell us a little bit about how you would handle those types of patients in terms of bridging for surgical procedures? Right. The three agents that have been approved in the United States, uh, the first was dabigatran, Second was rivaroxabam, and the last agent, very recently approved, was apixabam. Now, the bigger trend, there is some very good data related to the interruption and reinstitution of the bigger trend from the RELY trial. 
And that was a paper in circulation by Healy. He was the first author, I was the last author. And essentially, during the Relay trial, much to our surprise, there were approximately 4,500 patients that required interruption of anticoagulation electively for a procedure. And the procedure varied from a tooth extraction to a diagnostic cath to a major procedure. And what was done for patients with dabigatran is that the recommendation was to stop the dabigatran from between two and five days prior to the procedure. And that depended on the patient's renal function because 80% of the drug is cleared by the kidney. And then as soon after the clinicians decided that it was appropriate to reinstitute the anticoagulant, that was done. So between seven days before and 30 days after, data was collected. And the bottom line is that the patients on dabigatran, both doses, 110 and 150, did just as well as warfarin following the COVAX protocol. And with respect to bleeding, the thromboembolic complication rate was low and equal among the three groups. But what was particularly interesting was that if the procedure was within 48 hours of the discontinuation of therapy in all arms, the bleeding rate was highly statistically significantly lower for dabigatran. And dabigatran has the advantage in that it's orally active, rapid onset of action, and so forth, and obviates the traditional need for bridging. Traditional need for adjunctive heparin? is that Adjunctive heparin or low molecular weight heparin. Now, as far as rivaroxaban is concerned, you're aware that the drug was approved with a black box warning that stopping the drug may result in an increase in events. So this is my personal view on this, is that in the terminal phase of the trial, the protocol was not optimally handled, in that there was a period of time where patients at the end of the trial were not being treated with rivaroxaban. And to me, that was the reason why there was an excess of events during that time. There's a recent publication within the last three weeks in JAK where the analysis, similar to the analysis that we did in Rely, was conducted. And the results were essentially similar. So I don't think that there is a rebound a situation with rivaroxaban. With apixaban newly approved, the analyses have not really been completed or peer-reviewed, but I suspect, and this is a personal opinion, obviously would be modified once a paper is published in a reputable journal, that we'll find similar results. So we're in an interesting time. We're learning a lot about these novel agents, but they are a major step forward in terms of taking care of patients. Well, one final question. If you have a patient who requires emergency procedure for whatever reason, and they're on these agents, what would you do about the anticoagulation in those situations in terms of bridging? Well, that's a very interesting question, Paul. And so what I would do if they require urgent surgery First of all, I would try and estimate when the last dose of these drugs were taken because the advantage of them is that they're short-acting and 75% of the dabigatran is eliminated within 24 hours. So time is your antidote. The second thing I would do is I would push fluids, particularly in patients receiving dabigatran, but also the others, because in the case of dabigatran, 80% of the drug is cleared by the kidney. For the others, it's about 25 to 35%. It's all related to glomerular filtration rate, and that facilitates clearance. If they're being treated with an antiplatelet agent, I'd infuse platelet concentrates. If possible, I'd delay the surgery because time is your antidote. Having said that, there are no specific antidotes available. I would use charcoal and everything that we have, but antidotes are being developed for all these drugs and should be available after testing, of course, within a reasonable period of time. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Izekowicz. Thanks for asking me, Paul.